This is a tutorial on the appearance panel in Illustrator. I'm just using a t-shirt graphic I made for Monty Climb. So if I select the logo and I open up the appearance panel, and if you don't have the appearance panel, go to Window Appearance. So you can see the way I built this, I have a solid fill and then a pattern fill stacked on top of that. So the pattern fill doesn't have any background. And I do that for a few reasons. Um, I have a few overlapping objects in this pattern. So if I had a background fill, then those overlaps would be covered by the fill. So that's one reason is just practically it, it works a lot better to, to be able to have an overlap. It's a you know cleaner meshing pattern. It tiles a little cleaner. The other reason is I can use this pattern with multiple color backgrounds. If I want to adjust this, I can play around with with the background color and it won't affect the pattern. So anyway, I'll change that back to navy. And I'm gonna show you how to apply that appearance to this new object. So if I select the new object, there's one fill. So I can apply the pattern swatch to replace that fill, but the scale of the pattern is off. So if I hit the scale tool and hold the tilde key down while I'm scaling, I can size down the pattern. Or the other way I can do it is I can use the eyedropper to pick up the pattern, but I need to make sure that the pattern is the active fill of this object. So I just need to select it. Then I can select my new object and the eyedropper will pick up that fill. So I need to create a second fill on this object. I can do that by either adding this add new fill button or clicking the duplicate selected item or just dragging the fill to the selected or to the duplicate icon. So then I want to change my bottom fill to be the solid navy color. So I'm going to select that, go back to this object, make sure that navy is selected. I can select the new object and I drop that navy color. So the other thing you can do in the appearance panel is effects like a blur effect. Oh, let's see. I'm going to make sure the whole object is selected. Go blur, Gaussian blur. So now it just blurs the entire object. But you can also apply effects to specific fills and strokes. So if I just grab this blur effect and drag it into the accordion for this base fill, now you can see the navy is being blurred, but the pattern isn't. So if I want it on the whole object again, I can just drag it outside of that accordion. Now it's the whole object. Um, I'm gonna show real quickly I can add another effect on top of this. I'll add this halftone effect. And this is, okay, so right now it's being applied to the whole object, but I want that just on the background fill. So what's happening is it's being blurred and then it's being halftoned. If I move the halftone effect above the blur effect, then it'll halftone and then it will blur. So right now you can't even see the halftone effect because it's blurring so much. But if I turn this down, there you can see a little better. So the order of the effects matters is basically what I'm trying to show. If it blurs first and then halftones, then you get this really sharp halftone. So just be aware of the order that you're applying these, these effects in. So the other thing is, so I can apply this blur effect to multiple objects at a time. Turn the blur up a little bit. And then each one, I, when I select, I, you know, I can change, I can make this blur more than the other objects, so it looks more in the foreground maybe. But I have to edit these independently now. Whereas if I group the objects, so now in the appearance panel will tell you you have a group I can apply an effect to that whole group. So now if I select the individual object, there's no blur effect. If I click this group line, it'll go one step up to the group that it's in. And now I can edit the groups effect and it'll change the appearance of all objects within that group. So if I want this object to be grouped or, or blurred with these other circles, I can cut it, select an object inside the group and hit Command F to paste in front. Now it's inside the group, so it's blurred. The other thing you can do, well, I'm just gonna delete this blur effect. The other thing you can add fills and strokes to a group. So if I want to outline any object within the group, 
then I can do that. I can add a stroke. I can change the color of that stroke. And if I take an object outside the group, it loses that stroke. Anything you put in automatically gains that stroke. So it's really easy to just do a blanket appearance. Um, one thing that could be useful with, if you're doing illustrations is you can put an object in the group and add a fill to that whole group. And maybe I just want to warm up the colors so I can add an orange fill and I'll do 25% opacity. Now you can see when I hide this fill, you can see the effect that it has on the colors. The other thing you can do by stacking multiple strokes and fills is effects kind of like this, where basically this kind of scout merit badge look. This is all one object, so if I want to change the shape of this object, it's really easy because it's all just built onto the same object. I just have to move a point around and it redraws. So how I did that was so I have a fill, I'll just thicken up that. So this will be that outline stitch. I'm going to change the color. We'll do cyan. And I'm going to give it a tan fill. So I want to duplicate this stroke. So I'll click the duplicate icon. Now I want to give this a gradient. And I want it to be applied across the stroke so it goes inside to outside of the circle. And so just place your colors how you want them in your gradient, however you want that to be shaded. And then change the opacity to change the blending mode to multiply. And I'll turn down the opacity to about 30%. Uh, maybe we'll go 50%. So that gives kind of some, some contour to that stroke. I want to duplicate that again, and I will just do a solid black stroke for this one. And so it's still 50% and multiply, but I want to create a dashed line. And I'm going to do round end cap. So let's see, I need to turn up the gap. Uh, actually, I don't want a round end cap. I do want a stitch line. So, okay, we'll just go. Let's try two for the dash and a two point gap. That's pretty thick. So let's go. If you hit command and down arrow, you can go by 0.1 increments. So let's do that. Let's do 0.5 and 0.5. That looks good. Uh, and now for this inner stitch line, I'm going to duplicate this original blue stroke. I'm going to turn the thickness down to about three points. Now with that stroke selected, I'm going to add an effect. I'm going to go to path, offset path, and now I want about, mm, yeah, negative nine looks good. Now this one I want dashed with round end caps. Oh, whoops, that applied it to the whole object. So make sure that stroke is selected. Go dashed line, round end caps. Now I need to turn the gap up to counter that round end caps. And that looks pretty good. So that's how you can create kind of these more complex appearances by stacking multiple fills and strokes. Um, one other quick note. So if you pull this kind of hamburger menu panel open, you can see you can clear the whole appearance and it'll just get rid of everything. Or you can reduce it to basic appearance. Basic appearance means one fill, one stroke. So it just got rid of all the extra strokes and fills. It kept the most recently used stroke, I believe. Um, and then there's this other, uh, other item, new art has basic appearance. So what that means is I have this art selected. That's my most recent appearance. But if I draw a new object, it's going to reduce that appearance to a basic appearance. If I want to be able to draw with this complex appearance with all these strokes, I can uncheck that and then I can create a new object and it'll maintain the full appearance of the previously selected object. So if I want to make an object with this appearance, select it and just create a new shape and it'll draw with that full appearance. So that's it. Thanks for watching you guys. If you have any questions or suggestions, then just let me know in the comments and thank you for watching.